Once the two parties have selected their candidates and confirmed them in their national conventions, the Republican convention in mid-July, the Democratic convention in mid-August, we will then formally begin the 2024 presidential election campaigns uh, with the two parties lining up. In this case, there will also be a third party candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, the son of the famous uh, former presidential candidate, you know, the nephew of uh, former U.S. President John F. Kennedy. He's running on a third party ticket, and we can talk later on about how that might impact the election itself. Uh, but at this point, then, uh, they begin to campaign not nationwide, because the truth is there are some states that are solidly Democratic, or to use their the colors that are favored in U.S. political analysis, they're solid blue states like California or New York, uh, and there are solid red states like Florida or Texas. What this election really comes down to is which candidate can win the majority of the 588 electoral college votes. And the electoral college votes, not exactly, but it's largely correspond to each state's congressional delegation. So depending on the population of the state, the number of congressmen they have from the state, plus two senators from each state. So there are big states like California that have a large number of electoral votes, but they're almost certainly to go Democratic. There are also big states like Texas that have a large number of electoral college votes, but almost certainly to go Republican. So the focus of the election starting in August, September, and candidly the focus already right now, is on a group of what are called swing states. And these are states that historically have gone back and forth uh, between the two candidates and where the margin of victory has been very, very, very small. There are five that are probably most important. Uh, and these are five states that in 2016 voted for Donald Trump, delivering him the victory, and then in 2020 voted for Joe Biden, delivering him the victory. Uh, and those states are Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona. And once again, in 2024, those will be swing states. Uh, a group of those swing states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, are long considered to be the blue wall. They were historically core Democratic states, but the particular message uh, of Donald Trump has, was attractive enough in 2016 to, to put them into his camp. Arizona and, and, and uh, Georgia were more historically Republican states, but on the case of Georgia, on the strength of, of African-American voters, in the case of Arizona, a rapidly changing overall demographic, they went for Biden in 2020. And once again, they will be hotly contested in 2024. There are two other states that are often listed as swing states. Uh, the state of Nevada, which, although it went Democratic in 2020 and 2016, is a very narrow margin state. And so there's a potential that that state has a relatively small number of, of electoral college votes, six, but it could matter in the end, could go Republican. And another one which has been consistently Republican, but seems to be on the cusp of changing, is North Carolina. So collectively, those seven states are where the election will be determined. Uh, and so when you look at overall votes and you look at the colors of the map, it's a little bit deceptive. You really you need to focus on the battleground states, those swing states. Uh, and between now and the 5th of November, uh, that's where the attention of the presidential candidates will be focused.